Welcome back to the Least Professional Channel on YouTube. How's everybody doing? So, this video right here is going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to need these tonight. So, right behind me, see there's a couple of headstones here. It's not unusual. I'm in a cemetery, right? The thing is, is all of this is also part of the cemetery. But there's no headstones. Why is that? Well, because we're going to be spending the night in that building right there. At least the evening. We're at the Fairfield County Infirmary. This place has been around since 1828. A little bit before that, but we'll get into the history here in a few minutes. In this cemetery right here, there are 1,800 bodies buried. It's not that big of a cemetery, but the bodies, are, most of them are buried standing up. Throughout the property, the, uh, <laughs> we were just talking to one of the guys here that's going to uh, be manning the desk tonight. And he was telling us that there's over 3,000 bodies buried on this property here. So supposedly it is a very haunted location. A lot of tragedy, a lot of history here. So we're gonna take a look around and get inside and check it out. But I wanted to start off up here because this is a beautiful place if you don't know what's actually underneath your feet. All right guys, so like I said, we are at the Fairfield County Infirmary. They have a program where basically once, I think it's once a month, it might be every other month, they have a Friday night flashlight tour. So you can come in, you can check it out, ghost hunting, checking out the history. It's all part of a project to kind of keep the history going in the area because a lot of people, you know, older buildings like this, they don't really pay that close of attention to the history. And that's one of the most fun things for me. <laughs> <laughs> Although, if we caught something ghostly, that would be awesome as well. This place is supposedly very, very haunted, so maybe we'll find something. I don't know. But I did want to cover a little bit of the history. I took some notes earlier <laughs> because I have a terrible memory. Uh, so basically, this place was built in 1828, and it was built to house the, the homeless, the poor, uh, basically the less fortunate in, in Fairfield County. So it was meant to shelter the poor who were, they were fed and clothed as well, taken care of medically. Uh, supplied care to alcoholics, mentally disabled, those with major health issues, and even physical and physical scars. Because at, and at the time, there would be people that if you had a really bad physical scar, nobody wanted to look at you. You were considered a monster. Uh, so they would put those people here too. Uh, because it was such a good such a good place for the community, it actually filled up really quickly. Unfortunately, there was a lot of people that were in need of extra help or were just not wanted by their families. So in 1840, they replaced what was the original wooden building on the property with a brick building that stands here today. So that building was expanded in 1865. They actually had a laundry facility, uh, tenant houses, farm building storage. They built a farm across the street to help feed the residents. And that farm now, I'll get some, I'll get some video of that in a minute, but the farm now is a uh, extension of the Ohio State University. <laughs> that it actually, that land got sold to the Ohio State University later on. In 1917, gas lines were installed to help bring heating to the property. In 1926, pipes were laid to bring fresh water. In 1958, the facility was forced into the new pipes and technology because they didn't really want to use a lot of it. So they were forced to actually implement that stuff. Um, in the 1960s, the funding began to drop and that's when in 1965, they sold that branch of the, uh, the farm to the Ohio State University to be made into a Lancaster branch of the university. By 1985, they were actually down to 16 inmates and that was from and that was from a high of 82 inmates in 1903. So they, a lot of inmates went through here and they started dropping off. And actually in 1986 is when they closed down. And those 16 inmates were either basically sent out into the world or sent to other facilities. Okay, so we'll cover a little bit more of the history. There's, a, there's one particular store that I want to talk about. I believe it happened on the second or third floor. <laughs> I'll, I'll double check as we're going through. There's a bit, this is a big place. So I want to explore as much of it as possible and I'm gonna get some pictures and just kind of check it out.
right, so we, uh, we came over to the men's side now. We were walking around and, and we were checking out the women's side. We, the room's over there. Got some really cool pictures. And then we came over here, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, this might be the remnants of, <laughs> so when this building was repurposed into the, basically the government offices that became the county health department was here for a good long while, from I think 1987 until 2011. So my guess would be that this would have been like a reception window or maybe this was an office that people would come into. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, but I don't know 100%. But we found some really cool stuff here too, like this little tiller here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure exactly how much of this is. So when they, when the guy bought the building in 2020, he actually went ahead and bought some more. He went out and got some antique furniture. So a lot of the stuff that's here that we'll see in the rooms and stuff like that wasn't originally here because a lot of it was gutted and taken out when the health department took up a residence here. The health department only really operated on a couple floors they didn't operate throughout the entire building and there's even a spot upstairs that we're going to check out later where they didn't operate at all <laughs> so yeah i just wanted to point that out i thought that was kind of cool so we're going to get back to kind of walking around <laughs> we're going to get back to walking around checking the place out Okay, well, this is not what we expected to find. <laughs> we're still on the first floor of the building here, and we walked in, and my wife was checking this one room, and I was checking the other, and she goes, well, there's some really creepy pictures. <laughs> and I walk in, and some of these, they're obviously children's drawings, but I don't know if they were, like, supposed to be creepy or if they were just, like, kids drawing what they saw. So... <laughs> That was definitely something creepy to see. I, I don't have words. That's normally something I only see in the movies. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll have an actual ghost encounter tonight. <laughs> you don't seem... I seen the creepy hand. Yeah, that was... I'm not sure. And then the dead person over there. <laughs> okay, well, we're just going to continue our tour and walking around the building and checking it out. <laughs> Oh, that light is so bright. <laughs> so we came downstairs into the basement area. So this is the, the main stairway here. Somebody upstairs pounding. <laughs> huh? You see they're pounding. Yeah. So we're down here trying to find the morgue. It's supposed to be down here as well as what else did they say? What? Oh, nice. Ford promises best. <laughs> That's from Nixon resigning. So we're trying to find the the morgue and whatever else is down here. I don't remember exactly what all is supposed to be down here. The morgue and the food storage of dead bodies and food. <laughs> yeah, so they stored dead bodies down here. Oh my, you're going to have to walk ahead of me. I, I can't see with the light. <laughs> okay. The hell is that? A water fountain? Yeah, it's an old water fountain. Left or right? Um, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> As you guys can see, I'm carrying my camera around because I'm doing long-term exposure. Oh, I almost ran right into you. This is just a weird building. Doing long exposure because it's so dark. And uh, I figure if I'm going to capture ghosts, the best chance would be long exposure. It's just storage. It, why the fuck is there a shirt sitting in there? I don't know how much you guys can see of this whole area here, but this is storage. It's probably blurry because I have the settings set so that it focuses it's on me. Simple. Are you trying to reach somebody? Maybe. Oh my god. Yeah, it's a bag. You didn't see that? <laughs> it's 
It's not real. It's fake. I'm pretty sure it's fake. Fairly confident it's fake. Sure? <laughs> January, January. Either that or they just leave random bones laying around. And electrical energy. Okay, well. Let's walk out here. <laughs> Nothing down there, just storage. Okay. Hold on a minute, let's get our bearings and I'll get back. All right, I said I'd pick it back up when we found something exciting. And we found something exciting. It's the morgue. <laughs> we haven't gone in yet, so this will be our first excursion in. But I'm gonna grab the camera. Let's see who gets scared first. I don't have enough hands. I really need more people to go exploring with me to hold things. Oh I my just... gosh. Just don't order. <laughs> yeah, because I just don't have enough hands. Oh my god, it is. Look. Okay, so this is... Put the dead bodies. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> so we found the morgue. <laughs> and uh, I, got, I got some footage of where they would put the bodies. So there's the, the two tubs that they would wash the bodies in. And then in the actual mortuary, they have a slab there. And there's a drain. And that drain underneath the building is a, a stream that runs by. And they would wash the bodies off and drain them out in that room. And that everything that they were draining out of the bodies would go into that stream and would be swept out into what turned out to be the drinking water supply. <laughs> so that was a thing that happened. And where I'm at right now was actually the body freezer. For so, children. no, well, was it for children? Yeah, that one there's for adults. Okay, so this one was actually the body freezer for children. Oh, there's a drain up there, so I'm just using the bathroom. <laughs> I heard a weird noise. So this is the body freezer. They would actually put children in here that passed away while they lived while they were living here. There's an adult one a little further down, so we'll check that one out if we can in a minute. But I saw this chair in here. I was like, okay, I've got to go sit down. That is creepy. <laughs> the fact that this is sitting right underneath the bathroom upstairs. But I had to sit down in the chair because I couldn't resist. This is supposed to be like, if there is something haunted, and maybe I'll catch something on, on the microphone for the camera, I'm not sure. It's gonna be hard to decipher because there's other people here and because there's things like the bathroom running. So somebody flushed the toilet, I think, and is washing their hands. And so there's water running. <laughs> but other than that sound, yeah, just generally like, this is kind of a interesting place. And the funny tidbit about this was, for a while, there was body storage here. When there wasn't bodies being stored down here, they would actually store cold food down here. Over so, there. And in, I think it was in, in both. the adult one. Nope, just the adult one. Was it just the adult one? Yep. Okay, so they would actually store cold food in the adult freezer when there wasn't bodies in there. So that's kind of an interesting tidbit. And I was joking with the guy earlier that we were talking to. <laughs> Basically, he was telling me about that, and I was like, yeah, that would be really awkward. You know, I'm going to get the meat out of the freezer. Wait, which meat? <laughs> so you gotta be careful what you're grabbing but yeah that was something i found kind of interesting and uh i don't know maybe maybe i'll make a home in this place i don't think it's sturdy enough to sit on i don't want to lay down on these slabs and i'm a little bit too big for them too so let's see if we can check out the adult size freezer and see what that looks like i might have left in this little flashlight right there that's the adult one and we're aiming with it which is gross put this bag back on Alright, right, so this is the adult freezer right here, and this is where they would keep the uh, the food as well. It looks like I can't get it open though. Yeah, it's hard to pull open. I don't think it actually does pull open. Well, on that video we seen it did. <laughs> that doesn't mean it is now. Yeah, I don't want to take the chance of it falling off of there or something stupid happening. Anyway, that's so, where it is. I'm just gonna leave it, but. For educational purposes, let's see if we can slide this in a little bit here. Yeah, I can't really see much. Oh well. I think you I cut my one finger. One. Yeah, you get to see you get to see the ones where the kids were at, so so this was the morgue. This was the creepiest place of the building and it's supposed to be one of the more haunted parts of the building, I would imagine, because of the oh my God. the dead bodies and stuff down here. What the hell? Right there. <laughs> the saw bothers you? 
Yes. We saw a bone, and the saw is what bothers you. <laughs> it makes me think of them chopping up people right here. So she noticed that saw laying there. <laughs> they didn't chop people up. This wasn't a butcher shop. <laughs> How do you know? No, they. I'm here. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna cover the rest of the basement here and see what else we can find. Okay, real quick before we walk out of here, <laughs> I'll edit this picture and add it in later. But before I edit it, I'm gonna show you in the back of the camera. So I wound up taking a long exposure. <laughs> I wanted to, wanted to play around. I love coming to these places and trying this stuff, different stuff out. So I took a long exposure of myself in a couple of different spots. One being down there in the doorway. Uh, hey honey, would you mind turning the light down there? <laughs> there we go. A doorway down there. So I was standing in the doorway down there and I stood there for a couple of seconds and then stepped out of frame. And it looks like a shadow figure kind of in the doorway. And then I just took another long exposure of myself standing up right up against the, the drainage tubs here and waited a couple of seconds and then walked off. And you can see I'm transparent in the photo and that's without any editing at all. And so when I say things, when I'm talking about like some of the, the ghost hunting te techniques that people do, so they'll come out here and to different haunted places and part of the investigations will be photographs, audio equipment, all these different things that are all uh, fallible things. And with photography, when you when you see something that looks like an image of, you know, you can't tell exactly what it is, and maybe it's a little orb, or maybe it looks like a full body figure. And you know, a lot of times, what, what I've heard before, some of the arguments as well, there was nobody standing there when I took the picture. Well, it might be that you, if you had it set up on the tripod, if you were doing long exposure because it was darker and it's just easier to get the long exposure. And if you're trying to capture ghosts, like you have a higher chance, I think, if, if you're using long exposure. But there might have been somebody that was standing there when you hit the shutter button and then realized that you were taking the picture and stepped out real quick. And you didn't think another thing of it. And it's not necessarily out of malice. It might just be, hey, I didn't realize that the person was still standing there and they had moved didn't think about it or forgot you know so that kind of stuff can happen i'm hoping to catch some more stuff later um, that's why i've been taking a lot of pictures and i'm going to try some flash pictures here in a little bit and just try some different techniques especially as we head up to the higher floors just because i'm curious to see what we get i would love to get something that i can't explain just because i can't explain it doesn't mean it's a ghost but it's been a while i've never caught anything on audio or visual video or, or pictures that I haven't been able to come up with an explanation for. So I'd love to find something that maybe I don't have a full explanation for. But that being said, uh, <laughs> I'll start walking up. We're gonna leave the morgue here. We've hung out here for long enough, I think. We're gonna head upstairs and see what else we can find. All right, so uh, one more room before we <laughs> before we head upstairs. Maybe maybe one or two more rooms. I'm not sure yet, but we found this, uh, this cool little piano here. Uh, I got some got some B-roll walking around the room, so I'll share that show that here. And I got some pictures, so I'm gonna share the pictures as well. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll see something on them. But looks like this was dug up from somewhere. <laughs> it's uh. <laughs> One more stop on the bottom floor here. Walking through and found this casket over here. So thought that would be an interesting uh, photograph. And I figured I'd show you guys too. Because that's kind of kind of creepy. <laughs> but it, it looks like it was buried in the ground at some point. Like that concerns me a little bit. Like did they dig it up and put it down here? Was there somebody in this? Kind of creepy. Alright, so we're... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> on the second floor now. So 
second or third floor, I guess, technically, because the bottom floor was technically the first because it's the way the building's built, but found this uh, interesting bathroom here, <laughs> as well as a, as a room that looks like it was an administrative office at one point for the Fairfield County Schools. So it's something interesting. We're still looking around. A lot of people here ghost hunting and uh, found that kind of interesting. Not interesting, for, is it like a bad thing, but You're it's... You're in room 319. I'm in room 319. <laughs> but uh, I find it interesting, like it's always fun to run into people that are out ghost hunting and looking for things simply because like they're all approaching it from a completely different angle than I am. And I've got a bunch of equipment here and stuff like that and doing video and audio and so it's, it's a whole different thing. It's kind of cool to see the different aspects and the different ways that people approach things. All right, so we made it up to the top floor. We're in the attic right now. We were down the floor. We were going to try to... So they've got a prison room, <laughs> basically, where they would tie up unruly prisoners or inmates. They weren't even inmates, really. I mean, they called them inmates, but they were just homeless people, really, and vagrants and people who needed help, who actually should have been getting help, and were shoved in here. Point being, <laughs> we were down there trying to check that place out. There's already... There's somebody else in there, and it looked like they were using a Ouija board. So it's, it seems to me that there's people that are coming up here specifically looking for the paranormal, but they're using some methods that I don't necessarily think are going to do anything for them. Uh, I would have loved to try something like that, but this is the first time here and I wasn't sure. You know, I don't believe in the Ouija board anyway, so it wouldn't really have done anything. Uh, but I did want to show you guys this. So this is another spot up here in the attic where they would actually tie people up and they would chain them to the wall and there's that wheelchair there. I don't know that they always put people in the wheelchair, but they would tie people up, set them in the wall or set them next to the wall. And it just kind of shows the inhumane methods that were used back when this place was in operation. I, I, I would assume, <laughs> I would like to hope that by the mid eighties when it, when it actually shut down, that maybe they had they weren't doing things quite that bad, but certainly when it opened up in the 1800s, it was definitely being used in not, not the greatest way. So this was one of two potential spots. I can't remember exactly where, um, but we were just talking to Robin, I believe was his name. He's one of the volunteers here. And this is actually, a, it's either up here or one floor below us in the same area. A woman named Jane Householder died in 1929. And it was one of the really tragic deaths that happened here. Basically, she was an older woman. She was cooking some food in an oven and her dress actually caught fire. Well, it, she opened up the oven to get the food and the dress somehow got caught, caught on fire by the oven. So she was burning and she started screaming and a couple of attendants came to help her. Threw some rugs on her to kind of put the fire out and she wound up suffering for nine hours before she passed away. So it was, I want to say March 22nd, 1929, <laughs> if I remember my dates correctly. I don't have the act, the thing in front of me, but I was just looking at it. So, but that was uh, one of the one of the stories that they talk about here. And she's one of the people that is rumored to be seen, uh, especially up here and just kind of wandering around in different places. So that's one of the spirits that is supposedly hanging out. So.
right, so we find ourselves now in the prison or prison cell, prison room. <laughs> this is where basically you would go if you misbehaved. They would lock people in this room, and there was actually a gate. There's a. So we got this right here, and it's kind of heavy. But essentially, they would shut you in. And this is where you would stay until they decided that you were better off or being better if you didn't like that or if you caused more problems that's when they would take you upstairs to the dungeon which is where we were a few minutes ago where they would chain you to the wall uh, that was something I, I don't think i completely added in <laughs> when we were up there earlier with that uh that wheelchair that was tied to the wall upstairs that was that's a place called the dungeon and that's where they would stick you and they would lock you lock you up tie you to the wall if you continue to misbehave even after they threw you in this room so that's something <laughs> something that's kind of uh kind of messed up if you think about it but yeah this is and this is supposedly like i've talked to a few people tonight that have been in this room earlier and said they had some strange things happen so I would assume if this is going to be, <laughs> if something's going to happen, it should happen in here, right? Uh, we asked. Yeah, five cents. Yeah, and uh, honey here gave them five cents, Mrs. Bearheart. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta think. It, I can't just call you Mrs. Bearheart all the time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she she gave them five cents because apparently if you leave something for the spirits on the table here, and there's uh, there's cigarettes, there's money, there's a little beanie baby and uh, I guess if you leave something you're more likely to have something happen so I'm gonna kind of give it a few minutes and sit around here and just see if anything crazy happens um, <laughs> I find it interesting to see all the stuff that's left here there's obviously the change which I've seen that before but there's like a little keychain here and pictures some pictures like there's some really <laughs> really strange gifts but uh and then they've got a little post-it note on the table here we've seen some post-it notes around i think the volunteers put them up to kind of show you kind of give you an idea of like what to talk about in different areas or what ghosts are supposed to be in certain areas this one actually says superintendent hummel which i'm thinking that's who's supposed to be in this room uh, you're supposed to ask hummel are you here and then i guess he responds and then you're supposed to ask who runs this place. Not sure what the answer they're supposed to be. That's kind of interesting. Uh, and then the last one, I heard an inmate. I heard an inmate attacked you in a field. Why did he attack you? And that was actually, I think, one of the stories that we were hearing earlier. That it, I think this is the superintendent that was out in the front of the building, like beating the crap out of an, one of the inmates here. <laughs> So, and that was, the question was raised, like, well, if that's what's going on out front, what's going on inside the building? Like, so, there was obviously some pretty messed up things that happened here. But I want to give it a few minutes and just kind of chill in this room for a little bit. We're coming up on, what time is it, 10 o'clock? Yeah, almost 10, 10 yeah, almost 10, 15. So we're coming up on 10.15. Uh, we technically have until midnight. But I think we've checked out most of the places around the building itself. Um, we obviously started the video off in the cemetery. So that was kind of an interesting spot. And then we went down to the basement, we went upstairs, we've been down, so we've kind of been everywhere. All the hot spots, like the big spots that you're supposed to hit in here, we've kind of checked all of those out. I haven't seen or experienced anything yet. Maybe I'll catch something on pictures. You know, I've took a bunch of pictures. Maybe I'll get something on the pictures later. Maybe something will show up on the audio that I don't expect. I have no idea what to expect, but if prior experience is worth anything, I've been to some pretty haunted locations and have yet to catch anything, so we'll see. Are we still going to go to the cemetery before we Well, we can go back up there if you want before. You just want to be in the cemetery at dark? Yeah. <laughs> yes, the cemetery is open 
as part of this so we can go up there anytime we want so we might hit that up before we leave just because <laughs> it's been a while since i've been in, had the chance to get in a cemetery at night so that might be kind of cool but i think there's some other people wanting to get in here we've been in here for a few minutes haven't really seen or heard anything so i think we're gonna head up to the cemetery and that'll probably be the last spot we hit before we leave so catch you guys over there okay so we didn't go all the way up to the cemetery just because there's not really much up there <laughs> we were talking about it before we head out uh, oh yeah now you can see it but this spot right back here that I didn't talk about beforehand was uh, because I didn't know but apparently they would like dump bodies out here <laughs> before they buried them so there was the just bodies chilling hanging out people coming out and walking walking around out here and having just bodies laying in the ditch so that's kind of messed up but <laughs> I will say from a ghost hunting perspective you guys know already how I feel about that I think the the Fairfield County Informary is really a cool building as far as from a historical standpoint there's a lot that happened here it's really an interesting spot for history and it deserves to be preserved I would say whether you believe in ghosts or not if you have the chance to stop by and check out one of these Friday tours, I'll link their Facebook page down below so you can go check them out. It's 20 bucks and 7 p.m. to midnight. I think it's like once a month. So it's they do it pretty regularly. And then they, they also have private tours and that kind of stuff that you can get for a few hundred dollars. Which lasts, uh, from the one, one guy was saying, I think like 5, 5 p.m. to 4 a.m. So it's a lot of time that you get to hang out. And if you want to ghost hunt or whatever you happen to want to do. Uh, I would say <laughs> we didn't catch anything I didn't expect to but that being said it was still a cool place and the history is awesome it was nice to visit at least once I don't know that I'll be back we'll see um, I would like to at some point I would like to get to the point where I can go to places like this with you know just me and maybe a small group and check them out I feel like if there was going to be ghosts or we were going to capture anything it would be more likely with a small group Mostly because, like, realistically, any noise that I hear with uh, when it's a public group like this it could possibly be somebody in somewhere else in the building. Like, it's hard to discount that kind of stuff. So, and of course, there's all the stuff with the, the ghost hunting equipment, all that kind of stuff. It all has its own flaws. So, as a matter of fact, <laughs> before I go, I will link below in the description the Paranormal Tedium. They do a great job. Uh, Rich over there, he does a lot of breakdowns of ghost hunting equipment, how it works, that kind of stuff. So I'll link that channel down below. You can go check him out. He'll give he gives a great breakdown, better than I could do, I think. I've tried a few. I didn't do a very good job. He actually has the stuff. So go check out that channel. And <laughs> other than that, I think we're gonna call it a night. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a really cool spot. Like I said, if you're ever in the area, you want to check it out. It's definitely worth checking out at least once, I think. So with that being said, I want to thank you all for watching. Everybody have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.